Today we're teaching here. Here is a directive term used to help communicate with your dog the exact location where you want them to end up. Now there's many ways to teach this, but today I'm gonna to show you two separate methods that I personally use that you can very easily replicate at home. Let's get started. It's Sarah, and I'm gonna be working with Blue Ivy today to teach here. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. And if you wanna learn more than just here, you can hit the subscribe button and the not notification button to learn all sorts of fun activities that you can do at home with your dog. All right, now here in particular means one thing. It means a specific location where I want the dog to be. I don't wanna confuse this with the term come because in training, sometimes the word come and the word here are used interchangeably. Or if you're in your South like me, they push the two words together and it's come here. So just to be really clear with terminology, come in my training means I want the animal to come to me. And here means I'm directing them to a very specific location. All right, let's get started with a couple of tools. Okay, so we had a bit of a location change. It's super hot outside in the Carolinas. We originally wanted to film this video outside because it's so beautiful, but to be perfectly honest, we've worked Blue Ivy a lot today and she's just super hot and doesn't wanna be out there in the sun. So something to keep in mind that if you're training and your dog is just not having it, it might be a good idea to pause or move indoors to where it's a little bit cooler. So that's what we've done. Let's go ahead and get onto the tools. Now, I mentioned two separate methods. The first method is gonna be using this tool, which is called an alley-oop. And if you don't have one of these fun little thingamajigs, I definitely recommend that you get one because you can use it for so many different types of activities and it's such a great training tool. It's about 35 bucks and you can get it online at J&J &J Dog Supply. So the alley-oop is one of the tools. The other tool is simply just your hands. We're gonna lure her as one of our methods to help move her into position and getting her that, to that perfect here, that perfect direction as far as communicating with her where we want her to be. So just as a side note, I do always bring food reward, especially when I'm training something brand new. I don't use food reward on things that are already learned, but I like to get some of her favorite treats that she doesn't typically get on a day-to-day -day basis just for being a cute good girl. Um, but always have something to offer them. Again, this is a give and take relationship. It has to be mutually beneficial for both the dog and for you. Blue Ivy, wake up, come on. Now that you've had a little five minute power nap, let's see if we can get started. So when teaching here, she's already checked in, looks like she's much happier inside. I'm gonna start by luring. And so if we use <laughs> our fingers, you doing tricks for food? We're doing a different trick today. Ivy, come, sit. We're gonna use our finger to lure. So I'm gonna show her direction. Yes, and if she follows my finger, I'm gonna reward that. Now notice I'm not using any verbal cues. I'm not telling her here, I'm not marking it with anything. Simply using my finger and rewarding her right when I get to the exact location where I want her. So now I want her on the mat. She's on the mat, I offer reward. No verbal cues whatsoever. Dogs learn much more by body language and posture than they do verbalization. Now eventually, Good girl. We'll build in the marker. She's showing you all of her tricks today. Ivy, come. Good. Now speed of reward is really important. You wanna make sure that they're in the moment doing exactly what it is that you want them to do when you give them that reward so they can bridge that association immediately. As you can see, she's just following my finger. I'm just luring her around. So eventually I get to the point where I can just go and she does it without food reward. Now because she's still learning, I'm gonna go ahead and give her food reward after because she was a good girl and she figured that out, that that's what I meant by moving my finger around is that I wanted her to follow it. Good job, Blue Ivy, good job. All right. Now, once you practice this over and over and over again, you get to the point where you can actually use the term here and mark it. 
So now when you get her to the position exactly where you want her every single time, still feeling lazy, then you mark it with the word here and you build that into their vocabulary. Blue Ivy, come. It looks kind of like this. Here. Yes. Good girl. Blue Ivy. Here. Nope. Here. Yes. Now notice she didn't go exactly where I pointed. So I redirected her again. I said, no, that's not what I wanted. So just offered her a little bit of guidance to let her know that this wasn't the spot. This is the spot. This term is all about the specific spot. Reason being, you can use this for bridging communication. So for example, if your starting point is A and your ending point is a nice, perfect, tight heel, using the word here as a communication gap between those two things can help you build a really, really nice heel, very nice and tight. Heel being right on the left-hand side with the dog's nose behind you in position. All right, let's talk about the second tool that we use. Back to our alley-oop here. I'm just gonna pull this apart and use the top piece. If you've taught your dog touch already, then you're already ahead of the game. If you haven't taught your dog touch, you can check out our other video on how to teach touch. So this is what we use, um, and we, we, we deem this a target tool. So targeting means you're targeting a specific area or a specific place. It's the same thing as teaching here, it's just using a different object aside from your hand. So let's give this a shot with Blue. Blue, wake up, miss. So Blue already has some touch built in. Good. So she knows what to do when she sees this. What she doesn't know necessarily is to completely follow it. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with my finger, but I'm gonna use this to lure her instead. Notice again, I'm not using any verbal commands. I'm not marking it yet. I'm just getting her into the desired behavior and into a pattern where she understands what it is I'm asking. Good job. And once I've practiced that, and by practice I mean over and over and over again, small little increments, five, 10 minutes, a couple times a day to really get it, then I'll start using here. Good. Blue here. Good job. Blue here. Yes. Good girl. Sit. Now you're awake. Wait. Blue, here. Good. And she automatically starts to learn and understand that it's more about the position, not the object. That is the benefit in using more than one method to training. So I use the alley-oop, part of the alley-oop, and I use my finger. You can also use other objects and other methods again, but it's always good to switch it up so they're able to kind of understand what's actually going on instead of associating one item with what you're doing. I want her to learn what here means without having to use a tool, but again, using a tool to bridge it is really appropriate and very, very helpful. Good girl. Good job, Blue. Good girl. Ooh, Ivy, good girl, let's practice. another way that we can use here in practice. One of the ways is if you've taught your dog to go under an item, like under a table at a brewery, if you bring your dog out and about with you, you want them to be in a safe position so that nobody steps on their paws or on their tails and hurts them. So they might know the command under to go under the table, but maybe they don't go far enough. Using the word here to point and directly show them exactly where they need to be can keep them safe. So let's practice in the house a little bit. You can practice with a table, you can practice with chairs, you can practice underneath of your legs while you're sitting, but let's try a table and see how Blue does. Blue Ivy! Good girl. Blue, come. Here. 
Good girl. Nope, here, down. Good girl. Now, I'm gonna take it to the next level. I've got her under the table, and so she thinks this is the position she's supposed to be in, but I want her to crawl a little bit closer to me. This could be funny, because she's not very graceful, so I'm not sure how well she'll army crawl, but we'll try. Here. Good. So we just wanted to reposition her a little bit, and using here can help with that. Blue Ivy, here. Good job. Come. Good girl. Yes, good girl. Now, as you probably noticed in the video, <laughs> like she's doing right now, Blue Ivy is a rather lazy dog and she likes to show all of her tricks. So her daddy loves dead dog. And that is her favorite trick, which she's trying very hard to work so that she gets a treat from me by doing dead dog right now. We take her into the school systems and we use her as a humane education dog and this is by far her favorite trick. So she has a tendency to look like she's completely exhausted when in fact she's really not. She's just really working it to get some treats. Good girl, good girl. Let's talk homework. You all know that the best way to get the results that you're looking for is to practice over and over again. So I wanna leave you with a small, easy, simple homework assignment that you can do. Pick two days a week, maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays, and be ready to work with your dog for about 10 minutes at a time. You don't wanna work on a new skill for much longer than 10 minutes because they can get bored, they can get tired, and when you're teaching a new skill, you're really working their brain. So you wanna give them some, some rest in between cycles. The better they get, the longer that you can work, but if it's something brand new, let's start with 10 minutes at a time, two days a week. All right, Blue, you ready? Come. So what I'm gonna do is show you the sequence that I want you to practice to start. We're gonna use our finger. Again, you can use the alley-oop if you wanna use that super fun tool. And then we're just gonna start by luring, like this. Blue. This is step one in your homework sequence. As soon as you stop, offer the treat, offer the reward. That's where you're gonna mark your here. Stop, reward. Just practice over and over again. <laughs> Luring into position, stopping, and treating. That's step one. Once you have that down, then we're gonna point, stop, wait, treat. Okay, let's try that again. We're gonna point, stop, wait, and treat. So we're just building a little bit of extra additional communication. And then the final step, once you've practiced this over and over again, Tuesdays and Thursdays, give it a couple of weeks and they'll have it in no time. Then we're gonna mark it with our word. Here. Now in marking it with the word, we're marking the action. So the actual physical action of her moving into place is what we wanna mark. Again, it's a location marker. It's about a specific destination, but we want to talk to her in a form that she's gonna understand. So we're marking the action with here. Good job, Blue Ivy. Good girl. So that's that. It's a super simple, easy technique to practice. And again, having the word here in kind of your repertoire of commands or terms that you use with your dog can be super, super helpful in many different situations. If you're out at the brewery hanging out, you need them to go under a chair or in a specific place next to an infant or a child. Or if you're just using this to bridge other communications, it's a really good one just to have in the bag of tricks. If you have any questions, please feel free to list them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll do some more work with Blue Ivy shortly.